Hello everyone, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim. DC Designs recently released updates to their F-14, F-15, and Concorde. This is F-14 version 1.0.5, and we'll take a look at the F-15 version 1.1.0 and the Concorde version 1.0.5. And these were just updated this week, and it is primarily in preparation for Sim Update 11, I believe. Uh, though there are other improvements like afterburner effects and stuff like that. Uh, for the Tomcat, which I have here, it says fuel tank visibility fixed. And we do have fuel tanks, so I assume they are visible. <laughs> so I, I guess they're fixed. I didn't put any weapons on, uh, but uh, we did load the full fuel. Um, but partly what I'm interested in is with the SC Designs F-16, which had been recently updated as well, uh, it was able to get to insane altitudes and velocities. And I'm wondering if that's because of preparation for Sim Update 11 and that like in Sim Update 11 it won't be performing like that. It's just that something weird about Sim Update 11 led it to perform like that here or whether it's just weird. Uh, so we'll try to fly the F-14, F-15, and Concorde high and fast and see how they do. I won't necessarily land all of them, we'll just uh, do a performance check uh, to make sure they're performing the way they should as far as their maximum capabilities are concerned. So, uh, with that being the case, we are here taking off with the Tomcat as it is right now for the sim. And again, things may change with Sim Update 11. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping that it was just the F-14 and, I uh, sorry, the F-16 from SC Designs that was acting weirdly. And it is not the case that everything has to be updated for Sim Update 11 or else it would have weird performance issues. Looking good though, the Tomcat always looks good. Sim Update 11 on November 11th. We know it's a huge update. We know that a lot is being changed. So that's obviously why I'm nervous about it. The Tomcat didn't have too much change uh, as far as changes to it. It said fuel tank visibility, new afterburner effects, avionics improvements, thumbnails revised for SU-11. So that isn't even really a huge difference. And rudder in-op bug from colon dark start fixed. Well, I didn't do the colon dark start here. Uh, this is a nice cockpit. Uh, by most standards. I mean, it's looking pretty good. Though the speed dial... Speed dial isn't working at all. <laughs> um, um, now, they didn't really have the speed dial working exactly as it does in the F-14 anyway. But it's certainly not working here. And they've still got that issue with the altitude indicator where it goes to two on the 10,000s digit ahead of time. So when it goes to 25,000, it's in the middle of uh, two and three. And then when it gets close to um, 29,000 feet, it'll be reading 39,000 there. Let's take a look at the afternoon effect though. It's fainter than before, a little bit more subtle, more like the F-104's effect than what this had before. I mean, of course, we don't need to rely on that altimeter, but you saw 39,000 and 30,000, it's, it's weird. Maybe that's how it really is, but considering the speedometer is not working, that's, <laughs> that's not a good sign. So hopefully there'll, there'll be further updates to this coming up. We are past Mach 1. Yeah, it still doesn't have the mock effect thing that a lot of the airplanes do, including the SC Designs F-16. So it doesn't have the silence up front and the mock cone thing. wonder how hard that is to implement. It's been pretty inconsistent uh, across the board as far as the planes are concerned, whether they have certain mock effects or not, whether they have the crack at the mock cone or not, or whether they have the silence up front or not. It's always, it always seems to be different. We may accidentally be invading North Korea. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. Maybe we should turn around. Let's head back south. 
Invading North Korea is probably a bad idea. Quite apart from everything else, I doubt the scenery detail is going to be great. <laughs> nice that the rear view mirrors do a good semblance of working though. A bit fuzzy, but not bad. Very simplified version of the terrain behind us. Okay, we are at 55-ish thousand feet. We're going down a little bit, but uh, Mach 1.6 right now. Oh, looking nice and performing well. So, well, let's see if we can go past 100,000 feet. <laughs> Which the F-16 did. If we can, uh, that would tell me that... Uh, maybe there's something... Now, I've tested other planes. It's not like a general thing that I've got going here. The F-22 does not do that. It doesn't exceed its specs as far as service seating. And that's why Top Mock Studios... Topmark Studios F-22, I tested it again, and it, it hasn't had any update recently, but just to check, and it can't get to any special heights or speeds. It gets to its specified height and speed. So I'm thinking it might be just planes that have been updated recently with Sim Update 11 in mind. We could test other things too, but uh, we don't have a whole lot of time here. 65,000 is ready to serve the ceiling for the F-14, though that's stated. I mean, it can potentially go higher than that. But taking a look at our indicated airspeed, it is going to go much higher than that. Because the thing that ultimately limits how high the plane can go is the indicated airspeed. And at its service ceiling, it would be very close to the stall speed. And that's why it can't go any higher. We're nowhere near the stall speed right now. So that's why it continues to go up beyond 70,000 feet. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's a little bit weird, isn't it? Maybe I'll try a non-DC designs plane next. I'll try the F-104. That's about as different as, as these as it can get. But the F-104 can only go to 65,000 feet. And I've flown it many times before. And that's by Sim Skunk Works. Okay, we are at 90,000 feet, Mach 2.8. We are climbing and accelerating at the same time. And our indicated airspeed has a long, long way to go before we hit uh, stall speed of any kind. Uh, with the wings swept back, it's probably above 200 knots, but not that much. And we're at 548 knots indicated. So. It can go much higher than this. I fully expect it can go past Mach 2. Oh, sorry, Mach 3. Of course it can go past Mach 2, but... I'll let it go past Mach 3 before calling it. Okay, we are past Mach 3 pretty definitively. We are climbing fairly quickly, considering how high we are. And this is going to overperform an SR-71, so... Yeah. Alright. Let's try the F-104 as a control. So actually, I reconsidered that. The F-104, I believe, has a hard limit on its speed. Uh, it will probably just go over speed and uh, fail. So I'm going with the India Fox Teco F-35 as a test. So we'll see how high and fast this goes. This is the F-35A, not the B or C. I mentioned that I've already tested the F-22. So, that's why I'm not doing that one. But, just in case, I'll test this one. Once again, want to avoid North Korea? Now, the F-35 isn't uh, normally the fastest plane in the first place. So, we will see. We are expecting Mach 1.6 and... Uh, the service ceiling is officially 50,000 feet, but maybe higher than that. I already have the afterburner on. Oh no, maybe it has a button for that. Oh yeah, well, no, it's already on, yeah. That's it, off. Then we are past Mach 1. This does have the si silence up front. And a little crack. 
Well, we are at 50,000 feet and Mach 1.32 right now. I'll just level it off here. Well, we aren't accelerating significantly, let me tell you, Mach 1.43. Uh, let's try and go up a little bit more. But even a modest attempt to go up reduces our speed, which is how it's supposed to be at this height. Well, this is certainly performing more or less the way I expect. If we want to climb, we're not accelerating very quickly. We're still only at Mach 1.43 at 56,000 feet. And I'm not climbing very quickly at all. It's getting a little bit shaky too. But let me try to accelerate first and see if that gets us anywhere. Instead of going up. Well, we aren't going very much by way of speed here. We're at Mach 1.49 after a little bit. And it's probably not going to get past Mach 1.6. I'm going to try and climb to see how high we can get. But we're not accelerating while wow level. So basically it's performing the way it ought to. Probably if you were lower, uh, it might be able to accelerate a bit more. Okay, well, we're at 65,000 feet and pretty high for this. We're getting a little bit slow here. I mean, right now we're going down a bit, but we're not even accelerating. We're decelerating a bit. Mach 1.28 just now and Mach 1.27 now. 236 on the indicated airspeed. And that's even though we're going to be going lighter Though, actually, the way the afterburner works in this is a little bit complicated. Our fuel flow is pretty low. Yeah, well, I mean, if I take off afterburner, we are got to slow down in a hurry. Yeah, now we're really slowing down. So, we were on afterburner. So yeah, it can't go much above 65,000 and they can't maintain 65,000 for long either, which is what you'd expect. So our control is our control and it performs the way you would expect. Let's take a look at the DC Designs F15 now. Okay, so here is the DC Designs F15, uh, looking fairly good in the interior, though I'll be looking at the speed dial in particular in a sec. But yeah, I mean, at certain points it wasn't looking quite as good as it does now, and now it's looking decent. Uh, in fact, I would say that the HUD is much clearer. Uh, it used to be not so clear, I think. Uh, very fuzzy. Now the HUD is much clearer than it used to be. Uh, overall clarity points are good. And we've certainly got fuel tanks. Three external fuel tanks. I don't think we need them since we're trying to do an altitude and speed test, though. The fact that we're carrying them, and if we can still perform like the F-14 did, that would certainly say something, wouldn't it? So, anyway, here we go. I've got the afterburner on already. We might as well burn through that fuel. And the speedometer does work here. That's nice. I decided to take off from Singapore since it was so cloudy over in Seoul. But, I mean, it's fairly cloudy here, but not too bad. Let's just go around a bit. Ooh, shiny! I think that's shinier than it used to be. Uh, let's see, afternoon effects. Very mild, uh, subtle, just like the F-104s is. You can sort of see it, but it's not very out there. Just worth noting, I did pay for all the planes and everything else. I have not gotten any freebies from anybody for Microsoft Flight Sim, otherwise I'd tell you. Once again, sure looks good. 
One of the reason I'm doing these tests now is because I plan to do some serious flights for the 40, 40th anniversary commemoration of the 40 years of flight sim. I've been flying flight sim for 30 of them, so it's been a fair part of my existence. Interesting, uh, this plane does not have that problem on the altimeter dial. You can see it hasn't like gone halfway between 2 and 3 here. So the coding on this one, maybe that's how it's supposed to be in the F-14, I don't know. Maybe it, it does that weird thing where, where the 10,000th digit goes halfway. There are some weird things about this altimeter though. Uh, the needle, it disappears for a bit. And then it sometimes goes backwards. <laughs> so, it's not perfect that there is going backwards again. I don't know why it would be going backwards. We're definitely climbing. Backwards, for some reason. And then it clips into the background of it on the bottom end. Right there, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out, altimeter dial. So, yeah, what can we do? I guess... Uh, there is no such thing as perfection in this universe. We are past Mach 1. Now all the planes here, the F-15, especially the F-15C that we have here, can go high and fast. And this one does have the silence up front. Not the crack there. No crack, but uh, silence up front. Okay, we are at 65,000 feet. This is certainly not going to be the service ceiling for this plane. Maybe it's just DC Designs planes. They're just like this. But then we'll check on the Concorde. Maybe it's just the uh, fighter jets. We'll see how the Concorde does. It's got pretty definite limits. We'll see if they've fixed some of the other problems with it that I saw before. For this plane, the the update says emergency update for SU-11 compatibility, new afterburner effects, HUD glass improvements, they certainly did that, avionics fixes, uh, true airspeed readout in external view changed to mock. Okay, well I'm not even using the external view one. And no rudder bug from cold and dark start fixed. That seems to be pretty consistent across the multiple planes. Not too sure about the altimeter up there versus down here. I mean, how high would our pressure have to be to for them to match? It doesn't make any sense for the pressure to be that high, I don't think. I mean, that's at 66,000. Does the pressure even get that high? 31 point. Well, let's get a neutral third party to tell me. The pressure is only 29,000. Uh, sorry, 29.79. It's nowhere near that. But the altitude is 66,000. So there's something miscalibrated about this altimeter down here. That one up there is reading right. This one is reading completely wrong by a huge amount. At this altitude, uh, if I tune it to the correct barometric pressure, it's off by more than 3,000 feet. So, well, so much for that altimeter being anywhere near. At least the 10,000th digit isn't off, but yeah, that's no good. I guess they just expect everybody to look at the HUD and never look at the backup instruments, huh? Well, speed-wise, we're nominal for now, uh, but it's looking like we could go a little bit too high here. And I'm going to demonstrate that. Now, if there's a plane that can outperform stuff, it would be the F-15. This one, the sides are very nice right now. I think they've improved on that. They've certainly done work on it, and I appreciate that they've continued to update it after the release. 
Yep, we are past 92,000 feet. And I think we're accelerating while climbing here. I'm very curious to see how fast this goes. So we might hang out with it for a while. Oh, I can't quite see the Mach number. Okay, there we go. Mach 3. But we were going down a bit, but that'll change pretty soon now. Our indicated airspeed is like really high. Which means we can continue going like this for quite a while. Now mind you, this plane has just been updated. And I'll be interested to see how it performs in uh, Sim Update 11. But right now we're going at Mach 3.389 at 113,000 feet. And we are climbing and accelerating. <laughs> I, I think I should keep the indicated airspeed to below 800. Uh, so I'll probably climb at a higher rate. Try to avoid that going past that. Yeah, we're, uh, we're overperforming a bit. But let's see how far we get. By the way, the gap between the HUD altimeter and the altimeter down here is just off the charts now. That's reading 94,700. Uh, so that's 20,000 feet difference in altimeters. Well, we're at 132,000 feet. Let me just see how fast it can go. This climb could take forever. Just gonna try and level out a bit here. Yep, definitely a fly-by-wire sort of deal. I don't know why the HUD likes to sink so much, but... I just want to pass Mach 3.5 and then I'll be happy. Okay, that's Mach 3.5. Uh, ground speed of 2,146 knots. True airspeed, 2,110. And we have uh, a little bit less than three hours of fuel left, like this. And so we could go 6,000 nautical miles. I'm just going to spike up here and see how high I get now. I'm just going to pull it up, bleed off the speed. I can't see the HUD very well. It's sort of sinking there. The altimeter, the main altimeter down here is not moving much at all. <laughs> it's given up. It's just totally given up now. Maybe we'll hit the limit though. Let's see. I think it was 275,000, right? Now I just updated this plane. <laughs> Let me just remind you. Uh, this is the newest version. And there's no shenanigans in my sim. It's all realisms. We'll double check after this. Now we've lost speed thanks to this climb, mind you. How this thing is still breathing air at all is beyond me. There's something weird about how the intakes work on these planes. The ones that can get up here. They should be choked by this point. It's just a matter of not being able to breathe air. You know, we need fuel and oxygen for these engines to work. There shouldn't be oxygen or not enough for them to continue working. Uh, other planes take that into consideration. These apparently do not at the moment. And I'm pretty sure we're going to hit the limit on that altimeter. The bottom altimeter has sort of started going down from 100,000. <laughs> Uh, and 275,000, that's the limit for the sim. 
we saw that with the Dark Star as well. I don't know if we can accelerate. Gosh. I really don't want to do this with an F-15, but my curiosity gets the better of me. Well, now that we're up here, I'm aiming for Mach 4 at least. Airspeed. Hey, he's giving me an airspeed warning because the indicated airspeed is too high. Because, I mean, above 800 it ought to. Will it finally break the plane? We're at Mach 3.7. I don't care, I've got to keep going until it breaks. I mean, it should have broken a long time ago. Now, I mean, uh, to some extent I don't mind the planes overperforming. And I've said that before. Uh, I, uh, having a super-powered F-15 isn't too bad, but this is going too far. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is going too far. I mean, a little bit of uh, extra range, a little bit of extra speed is fine. But uh, we're way beyond any bounds here. Maybe the limit's at a thousand knots indicated. Come on, don't just blink an airspeed warning. Break, darn you. Give me the black screen. <laughs> Should I mean it started blinking with the airspeed warning 300 knots ago? I mean indicated. This is the F-15, I swear. Uh, b before we get any further, let me just uh, verify. Let's be clear. Uh, flight model modern. Okay, there's six results. Oh, that's for these. Yeah, modern. Nothing. Nothing special there. Um, uh, I forget if I have developer mode. Uh, developer mode is off. Okay, experimental things. Uh, I don't know what a nano VG is, but I, I don't know if that will make any difference. All right, assistant op assistance options uh, hard except for the taxi ribbon, and I've got ATC voices on. I think that's reasonable. G suit on in flight when aircraft shuts down on and G, G effect is for a jet pilot. So everything else is hard. And we continue. Mach 4.6. I'll, I'll stop it at Mach 5. It'll be enough. Uh, I, I'm sure it'll keep going, but I don't have the time. <laughs> I just... I don't have the time to sit and wait for it to get to Mach 10, but it'll probably get there. It's abundantly clear that they haven't actually told it to stop itself once it got to a particular speed, as our indicated airspeed is now exceeding 1800 knots. And of course like this, it would be able to go into space if the sim allowed it to. It would certainly be able to climb higher and there seems to be no limit to its, its acceleration so perhaps it would get to orbit even because the lack of air is no no limit either apparently okay we're at Mach 5 and I am calling it I am done <laughs> so yeah we will try to Concord I hope hope that Concord at least is sane we'll find out Okay, here is Concord, and we've got the visor going. Co-pilot, engineer panel, everything looking fine here. But what is going to happen when we get high and fast? That is the question. I've got the British Airways livery, we are taking off from Heathrow. Visor up. Ah, uh, the this this plane actually uses the button to engage the afterburner. I didn't even have afterburner on on takeoff because I was not expecting that. So, uh, so this one click afterburner. Basically the same effect though. And like with the stock planes, you can't use the same button in order to turn off the afterburner. You have to actually lower your throttle to disengage the afterburner. So that's interesting. Okay. 
I am going to have autopilot do some of this business. The auto throttle uh, only has 400 at most. So we'll just keep it to that for now. It doesn't matter, it doesn't seem to obey very well. <laughs> uh, let me just get all that. Put that on again. Okay, there we go. Well, we don't really need it. Um, you know what? Forget that. I'll just go full throttle and manage it manually. Now, the fact that it has an apparent red line at Mach 2 right now does suggest that we can't go very high and fast, but we'll see whether it actually obeys that, whether it actually decides to bust the plane if it goes over the red line speed. Okay, Mach 1.8. I'm gonna keep it climbing. Basically, a uh, hair's breadth away from Mach 2, but trying to ascend in such a way to avoid going over speed just yet. The indicator speed is going down as we climb, and we're not climbing super fast, but we'll see when we level out. So far, it hasn't done anything too surprising. 65,000 feet, still Mach 2. Indicator speed is going down, relatively speaking, but uh, we're, um, we're getting a bit high now. Okay, well our Mach number is going down. I don't want that, so I'll flatten out. We'll try to stay at Mach 2. That's fair. Well, it's definitely not accelerating very much right now. I don't think we could get too much higher and still have it hold Mach 2. So it's not too bad. I mean, 71,000 feet is not unreasonable for Concorde, considering it's super cruises. In other words, we have the afterburner on right now. It holds Mach 2 at 55,000 without the afterburner. It certainly isn't supposed to run the afterburner all the time. So running the afterburner all the time and getting to this height is not too much of a surprise, actually. And it's not accelerating in any sort of crazy way. Well, we're getting a little bit lofty here. At 78,000. I'm going to try and level off and see whether it will actually limit us to Mach 2. Eventually, we won't be able to go any higher if we hold Mach 2. Simply because the indicator speed at higher heights is so low at Mach 2. So let's see if it really has an overspeed situation past Mach 2. This is so far the most sensible one of the planes I've tested, except for the F-35, I mean. It's believable that it could get to greater heights with the afterburner constantly on. That's not unreasonable. It's actually having some proper aerodynamic issues with going faster at the moment. I, uh, I can't actually pull up. Uh, I'm trying to pull up. I've got the joystick all the way back. Um, I'm gonna push down. It's like it's stalling by that uh, surprising indicated airspeed. It's not showing the needle passing Mach 2, but I swear. Going down like this, we probably should have. Oh, there we go. There's the warning. Well, heck. Considering how fast we're going down, we should get a warning. I feel like, I mean, considering how much our indicator speed has gone up, we probably passed Mach 2 a long time ago. Let me try and level off here. I don't believe the Mach indicator anymore. We do have a ground speed indicator. It's at 1,189 right now, which is not unusual. Uh, I wonder if we can turn off the warning at least. Well, we're more or less level at 73,000 feet. But we're not accelerating. 
Ground speed remains 1,192. And it's wobbly like this. Holding pretty much at 458 to 459 indicated. And close to 1,200 knots. So I'd say it's probably performing the way it ought to, considering I'm pushing the afterburner here. I've just cut the afterburner. I mean, and it's wiggling. It's it's objecting properly to going this fast. Yeah, it wasn't really accelerating, so I think it's properly limited and really can't go too much faster than Mach 2. We didn't really get it there even though I pushed it. And we leveled out and everything. Though I admit the overspeed warning sound is a fairly formidable deterrent to trying to find out. But yep, as I get this back to safer speeds and hopefully stop it from wiggling, I'll wrap it up. It seems like the DC Designs Concorde at least is sensible. The F-14, F-15, the F-15 in particular, <laughs> um, I'm not sure about I, we, Maybe we could have gotten the F-14 up to the F-15 heights too. I don't know. So those are in the same bucket as the SC Designs F-16, but we'll see how all these things work in Sim Update 11. Can I stop you from wiggling now? Anyway, probably if I turn on the autopilot, it'll be better. Uh, needs to dampen, dampen out a bit. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.